It's not going to happen. Because, okay, we've got now, every one of you represents a deal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's say it all makes sense. And let's just say that they got synergies and whatever the fuck that means. Okay. And then him, he falls out. But you showed the bank all ten balance sheets. You showed the bank, right? And he falls out. And so then when the bank's going to say, well, how are you going to replace his equity in the deal? Even though all ten deals stand on their own feet, right? But once you show them, once you show a 15-inch dick, they're not satisfied with a 3-inch dick anymore. Because size matters. Contrary to what you've been told, you two centimeter fucking putzes. And what if three deals fall out and you only got seven left? Well, where are you going to replace this fucking deal? You do not cross collateralize transactions under any fucking set of circumstances. Never. It's death. Because you have no guarantee that all of them are going to be in it at the, at the goal line. And your CFO and your board of directors, which you should honor, are going to tell you because they want to hit the mother load. They want to hit it for six right away. They're going to say, let's do uh, 12 or 14 of these cocksuckers. I mean, I didn't know you could do this with no fucking money before. <laughs> as soon as they find out that you don't have to have money, it's like millennials, you don't have to wear a condom anymore. You can fuck everybody, just put that dick in something. I'm telling you, no. And that's where the, most of the kids that fall apart, fall apart trying to do big deals all at once. And then when the three deals fall out, and your board will take it personally. Even though it's your fault, you should have never let them talk you into it. And then you start, the board members start falling by the wayside. And uh, the worst that can fall by the wayside is your chairman. And when your anchor chairman leaves, because you represent, you bring no value to the fucking deal. The thing is, you got to understand, you're going to get most of the money, but you bring zero value. Zero. And in fact, in most of your cases, you bring negative value. And when the chairman leaves, because most of you, even after me screaming and yelling, don't have leadership skills. There's two or three of you that you got some leadership skills. <clears throat> when your chairman leaves and half your board leaves, you're holding your two centimeter inch dick. What do I do? And then you, the biggest mistake you make is one of the things the, the QLA program is based on. You don't share doubts. When the world's coming apart, when you find out there's no Allah, there, there's no Buddha, there's no God, there's only the devil. Then you go home and you tell your old They used to call uh, girlfriends, uh, wives, old ladies. They don't do that anymore. You go home and tell your old lady, you know how you see in the movies, how was your day today, honey? Oh, my day. Oh, Jesus, the boss yelled at me and I didn't get the commission. Why do you think they have no respect for you? Why do you think they leave you? Because you don't have a... One, you, you, if you don't think you can fuck all night, I guarantee fuck until you can't fuck all night. Well, you haven't fucked all night since the third week that you knew the slut. And you moan, and, moan, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know how when you flush a toilet, and there's a big turd, and it kind of wobbles around before it goes down? That's you. And then, Kool-Aid doesn't work, Dan Pina, the fucking fraud in the castle. You can read it on Reddit. Every one of those cocksuckers is somebody I threw out of the program that failed. So you don't want to link deals together. And that's one of the things he's done. So now he's gone from 10 deals to three deals. 10 deals to three deals. And I would rather have it just one deal. One big one. One, well, or one medium. Well, just fuck somebody. Put your dick in something. Come, have an orgasm in somebody. Even if there's a rubber doll, I don't give a shit. I didn't even know people fucked rubber dolls until about a year ago. I had no idea. That they got motors in it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's too much information. I had no idea. Okay. Next takeaway. Default's a bitch. 
which you, everybody that you're going to listen to, not because I, I handpicked them, everybody that has done one of the webinars says the same thing, defaults a bitch because it is a bitch. And it's easy to fall back. Whether you're 17 years old or you're 57 years old, defaults a bitch. Because you fall back to, um, to uh, your norm previously. Your, your norm previously is before you came onto the estate yesterday. That was your norm. Your norm's never going to be the same. You may choose not to use all the tools and the processes and all the things I talked about, but you can't ever say, I don't know how to do it. You may choose not to do it because it's emotionally so um, uh, distressful. That, that I, can, I can understand that. But then, guess what? All the free time you've got now, I don't have to beat myself up about being... Uh, getting wealthy or making money or being an affiliate on some fucking morons pro affiliate program, I can just go on with my life. Instead of reading all those fucking bullshit books and all that shit, just, just think. Just think. This is one of my favorite questions of the university students. Just think, kids, as I'm looking up at them, if you weren't afraid of anything, nothing, getting a bad grade, your parents not liking who you go out with. You want to drop out of school, but you're afraid to because your dad will beat you. Just think if you weren't afraid of anything on the planet, nothing, where would you be? And I ask you the same thing. Steve Jobs was afraid of nothing. Warren Buffett is afraid of nothing. Bill Gates is afraid of nothing. Henry Ford was afraid of nothing. I'm afraid of nothing. And yet those names, and I could name thousands of them like them, continue to succeed, continue to change the world. And the rest of the world, the 99.9% .9 of the world, is afraid to take a shit. Other takeaways, the um, eyeball to eyeball, everybody on the dream team. What did Frank say? Eyeball to eyeball, dream team and eyeball to eyeball sellers. The challenge with the millennials is because they've grown up on the net. They don't know how to speak. They don't know how to talk. That's why you can't get laid, guys. When I first heard about a dating, uh, you know, uh, the services they got on, on the net, which is about 15 years ago, I, I couldn't believe it. I thought I was hearing shit. Called up my, one of my sons. What is this shit? You, you can get a date. Oh, yeah, Dad, they got dating services. And well, you want to get your willy wet. That's why, yeah, of course, Dad. And you can, do, you can go online. And Sally showed me one. What the fuck? What have we come to? You got to go online to get your willy wet. Jesus Christ. Allah wouldn't like that. Buddha wouldn't like it. Nobody would like it. The IT guys do. Huh? The IT guys do. I know. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the, it's unbelievable. That's why I say it's irreversible. We're going down the shitter. But as long as we make hay while the sun shines, we don't care about the world going down the shitter. We're going we're gonna to go down the shitter rich. And I've been rich and I've been poor and there's no comparison. Any comments or questions about uh, the guy you just saw on the, on the webinar? It's pretty straightforward. It's very straightforward. And the guys that were asking those questions of him, ironically, lived in Singapore, just like him. They probably walked down the street by him and didn't even know who he was. Uh, they didn't belong to the club that he belonged. And the club that I belong to and have belonged to is the Jonathan Club, uh, the, uh, and I've, I've been a member since 1981. And um, the, um, if you've gone to a school that's got, you know, like Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, MIT, one of them, they have clubs, okay? 
um, the um, and, and and you can you can join those clubs and the alumni associations uh, for those that did go to school, and they have alumni associations for other for schools in in the Netherlands, for schools in Germany um, are great. Uh, the um, but LinkedIn, as he said, is the magic tool. It is the it is the secret sauce. It is the source. Of 95% of all the dream teams I've built since LinkedIn's been around, what, 10, 12, 14 years, something like that. Before that, as Bruce Whipple would say, it was shoe leather. It was shoe leather. And as he would say, he didn't go to a prestigious school, and I sure shit didn't go to a prestigious school. So we weren't going to our alumni for, um, uh, for, for board members. But remember, every single person on LinkedIn, even if they say they're interested in nonprofit, that's a euphemism. I'd like to make some money, but I don't want to say I'd like to make some money, so I say nonprofit. You've got something in common with every single person that's on LinkedIn. They are there because they want to do business. And when, 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 when you see the scripts in, uh, to use and what words to use, uh, they will, um, uh, the guy the, uh, from Hungary, the hotel, or not hotel, excuse me, the hospital magnate, he got his chairman in 180 seconds. He responded to him on LinkedIn. 180 seconds. Three minutes. But it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. And um, the other thing about um, Deb is that um, the, uh, when you've come from a big organization that has a big balance sheet, meaning They've got billions in the bank or billions of assets. It's a lot easier to do business than when you just come with just you in your three-piece suit or whatever. And some of the kids that are used to what I call the Goldman Sachs Superman shield have trouble making the transition because they're not wearing that Goldman Sachs Superman shield anymore. But you don't have to, you know, we have ex-Goldman Sachs guys that have gone through the program and have been successful. But you don't have to have that. <clears throat> What you do is you take the same uh, look-down-your-nose attitude that you had when you were at Deutsche Bank um, to, um, it's you now. And we clearly have overwhelming success um, with the kids. 25 years ago, it was tough for the kids, the kids meaning you, to buy off because I was the, ostensibly the only success. And you automatically wrote off, well, I'm not Dan Pena. I don't have the communication skills of Dan, blah, blah, blah. And so uh, you didn't do it. But now we have retards that have made 40, 80, 500 million. The reason I have a picture of Forrest up here, I've had him from 80 IQ to 180 IQ. And the 80 IQ made more money than the 180 IQ. That's how smart you have to be. <clears throat> Literally. No exaggeration. Remember I told you I exaggerate? I'm not exaggerating about this. Sally would tell you we've had some 50 IQs. I should be proud of that, but I don't like to say that. She's probably right. <laughs> but, and you heard him say IQ's got nothing to do with it. And he, well, us with high IQs always say IQ's got nothing to do with it. He happens to have a high IQ. <laughs> but <clears throat> I've never seen a guy with an 80 IQ says IQ's got nothing to do with it. Right? And I've never seen a girl, you know, a girl that's got big tits or uh, uh, big tits, or whether I had big tits or little tits, I'm the same woman. I never heard that either. It's always the girl with the little tits that says that. But he's doing the calls. And he's now fallen down, not fallen down, but he's pulled back. This uh, joint collateralization about deals, 10 deals and three deals fall out, I mean, it's critical. It's critical. Because once you get into that, that mix master, when you've got a bunch of deals, and the way it happens is seven deals are going to come all at once. And you're going to be so happy you don't know whether to shit or go blind. And you're going to put in your report to me, and I'm just going to, uh, well, uh, I go berserk. But I mean, were you fucking deaf? 
But all seven are going to come within five days. It's like the old bull and the young bull up on the hill, and there's 50 cows down on the bottom. The young bull says, let's go down and fuck us one. And the old bull says, let's walk down and fuck them all. One at a time. I, well, say, you don't even, I don't even think you, fuck them all. You get it? God help us. This is why, I mean, we're beyond this. You don't understand. I keep this here for a reason. See, you connote kissing frogs with kissing ass. I can see it in your fucking poor eyes. You don't want to be an ass kiss. Nobody wants to be a brown nose. Everybody understand brown nose? The kiss is the boss's ass to get promoted. Everybody understand that? See, you connote kissing frogs with kissing ass. Especially in certain parts of the world. Asia, the Middle East, kissing frogs is kissing ass. And you're going to stay poor. I've been on my knees begging for money. Literally, on my fucking knees. Call me anything. Just give me the fucking money. The rest is bullshit. And that's why, in pre-AIDS, I got more ass than a toilet seat at a bus station. Rock stars had nothing on me. I stopped counting at 5,000. 5,000. You couldn't insult me. And I didn't know what no meant. So I've just switched that getting laid to making money. I didn't know it was hard to get your willy wet. I swear to Christ. I swear to Allah. I thought our relationship started and ended right here. The girls I dated. It started and ended right here. Any questions about Deb? Okay, YouTube. Go fuck yourself.